late evening mid-september um things are kind of winding down so we got some tomatoes all up in here to pick like these ones there's quite a few green ones there's some ripe ones in here over here there is a whole bunch of cherries different variety of cherries and this is the last of the tomatoes for the season so i'm thinking yeah, and Henry is in the back, but Henry is one massive dog, man. But what I was thinking is a nice roasted tomato soup. No, we've done roasted tomato soup before, but this one, you're going to notice another another sort of twist to it. So let's go inside, and we're going to... Yo, let me show you how many tomatoes we get in a second. Hold tight. This is the little haul that we got there. Um, yeah, some of them are green, but I brought them out because it's going to get cold. It's going to hit frost. They're not going to ripe on the tree anymore. But now let's go inside. I want to show you guys a quick little recipe to celebrate tomato and fall and the Caribbean. It's a, it's a nice combo. What's up, soldiers? Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Today we are doing a roasted tomato coconut soup. We're adding in, well, two things. I want you guys to be aware of as we do this. One, depending on the tomatoes you use, the, the soup may turn out a bit tart. Go in with some honey or some brown sugar to balance off the, the acidity and tartness. Two, you're going to see me use salted cod in there. Yes, I'm doing something totally different. This is not mommy or granny or tanti's tomato soup. This is Uncle Chris's tomato soup. We are adding some salted cod in there. It will have a, a slight sort of fishy undertone. And when I say fishy, more like a good lobster bisque kind of thing. Don't add that if you don't want to. That salted cod you can hold back. But if you really want to play with flavors, do that. Roasted tomato coconut soup. You're going to love this one, man. No dumplings, though. No yam. No, mm -mm. Just beer soup. I've gone ahead and I've washed all the tomatoes I'll be using. And uh, it's on a, on a tea cloth there. It's just drying off. You need them to be dry. And for the small ones, like the cherry, the different types of cherry tomatoes, they're going to go in whole. For the bigger ones and it's a great opportunity as well notice of this this part here has gone bad it's a great opportunity to discard that but still use the tomato uh, quickly show you something here i'm going to trim off that piece there as well and for the big ones i'm just going to cut them in half so they roast sort of evenly and we're going to remove the sort of woody stem area there because later on in the soup this will be too hard to break down I'm going to discard that. So same thing again here. Or you can just use a paring knife and you can go in from here. But again, it's a lot easier if you just cut them in half. Like so. And then you use your knife. Sort of a triangle cut. And boom, it's gone. So wash, cut, and put onto a sheet pan. I've got my oven preheating to 450 degrees. So four, five zero degrees we need some good olive oil and then my tomato here has already been prepped washed dry sliced open and it's on a solid baking tray there to that sea salt fresh ground black pepper and that salt is going to help to bring out the sweetness of the tomato and something from my garden i love adding fresh thyme to the mix here now later on i will be using my confit garlic i'll have the the recipe video for that down in the description of this video but if you wanted to add garlic to here i would recommend it if you don't have the confit garlic but confit garlic is so useful and so tasty so I'm just tossing in all this fresh thyme in here. I'm going to go in now with my hands. Toss that into the oven 450 degrees on the middle rack. 45 minutes later, took it out of the oven. You see all that juicy stuff there? We're going to allow that to cool for a bit so we can better handle it. Because what I want to do is to take some of the skin out and discard it as much as you can. Later on, it will be made for a better consistency with the finished tomato soup. But for now... You know, put it aside and we're going to get cracking in the pot now. 
got about a tablespoon and a half of coconut oil so we started off with olive oil but here we're doing coconut oil because I want that coconut flavor to shine through in this soup now you might be thinking Chris this is a big pot it's overkill two things I'm making quite a bit of soup and two I'll be using a stick blender in there so the higher the size later on it won't splatter on me you gotta think forward you know what I mean medium flame a diced up large onion two scallions and two stalks of celery, the leaves, and everything. I'm going to turn my heat down all the way down to low. Put the rest of that in there. We ain't trying to waste anything out here. And I'm going to go in with a fresh brown black pepper again. Nice dose of that black pepper. A couple more things to go in there. My heat is still on low. I'm going to use one of these pimento or seasoning peppers. Again, this is out of my garden. And we're going to need some more fresh thyme. The thyme we roasted the tomatoes in, um, we'll discard that. We just want the leaves. We don't want the stems now. Just the baby leaves. That's all you want going in there. And you want about four or five stalks of that. Just break it back like so. And dump that in there. As far as that pimento pepper goes, just give it a rough chop. We're going to be using a stick blender after so don't really fret too much about everything breaking down and all that it will be forced to break down later on i'm going to go in with a couple more sprays at a time though but my heat is still on low and my two little secret ingredients for this tomato soup is my confit garlic and if you head over to youtube.com slash food faq i'm going to go in with four and a half Two, four, what? Almost six cloves. Well, let me put a scene one more now. If you head over to there, you will see that. And all it is, it's garlic, which has been slow cooked. Really, really, really slow cooked in olive oil to bring out all that sweetness and to preserve it. The other thing, I am from the Caribbean. I make no apologies for that. Some prepared salted cod. And all you would do is boil it or soak it overnight in water or boil, put pour boiling water over it. Remove most of that salt and rehydrate it. And in doing so, you'll be adding a sort of umami, the Caribbean version of umami, to the soup. We ain't skylarking at all. This is just big people's soup. You know, lame kind of thing. Keeping in mind that we salted the tomatoes when we started off. The salted cod is in there. Yeah, we soaked it overnight and all that, but there will still be remnants of salt. And the chicken stock that I'm using will also have that sodium element to it. I'm going in with a tiny bit of sea salt at this point here. Nothing too much. Later on we can adjust that. And I'm going to go in with two tablespoons of pure tomato puree or concentrated tomato. Just going to mix that in there because I want that tomato, that puree or pure tomato there to touch the bottom of the pot because that heat will bring out the natural sweetness of it as well. I'm gonna crank up my heat now. Man, does it ever smell good in the kitchen here? I kid you not, man. I'm gonna crank up my heat now to medium. Then it's time to add chicken stock. Now if you're doing this vegan or vegetarian, you can certainly use a vegan or vegetarian stock. If you're doing this gluten-free, use a gluten-free stock. And I believe that is 900 mils of that chicken stock. The heat is going to bring that up to a boil now. And we're going to allow that to go. And we're going to prepare the tomatoes now. Pretty much all I'm doing is pulling back on the skin like so. And that's going to go into the rubbish. All you got to do is pull back. Because as I said, you're going to flip it over and pull it back. Because that's just going to cause problems later on. Now the small ones you probably can't do it because it's just going to get messy. Oh look at that, I did it. So it will take some time, but I assure you will get a much better soup if you take that skin out as I'm doing here. Other thing is, as soon as I remove that skin, I'm tossing them straight into the pot here. Now remember, make sure it's cooled down so you can handle it, right? And this is why earlier we removed that tough sort of woody center, the stem area, because we want a nice smooth soup later on. So all of that is going in there. Now, here's the thing, you don't have to remove the skin, but it is a nice touch. You will get a more silky, 
smooth soup at the end. So it does give it a little, it is a little bit of a work, but it's worth it. The other thing we need to do is all the juices, which accumulated at the bottom of the tray there. I hope I don't make a big old mess here, but that's all gonna go into the pot as well. Now, if you haven't noticed, I've already removed the time that we went when we roasted the tomato because that is woody we don't want that that could potentially be a choking hazard it's starting to come up to a boil now just gonna move that around I want everybody to start to get to know each other in there and to bring it all together the star one of the stars well that salt fish was a hidden ingredient the confit garlic was a hidden ingredient the star boy coconut milk two cups of coconut milk and I will add a cup of water because I want to cook this for a while bring that up to a boil and let happiness happen in the pot there took a few minutes but we've got a lovely bubble going there so I'm going to reduce my heat down now to medium low so we have a rolling boil nothing overly vigorous and we're gonna allow this to cook for about 20 minutes. 25 minutes later on that sort of rolling boil and it is exactly where I want it to be. I went in with a tiny bit more black pepper, taste it for salt and adjust it at this point as well. Your tolerance for salt will definitely be different than mine. So all we're gonna do now is turn off the stove and we're gonna go in with the stick blender. Before we get to blending this and making it smooth, if you find that it's overly tart, because it depends on how sweet the tomatoes are that you use, you may need to add a little bit more salt. You can add some honey in here. And if you wanted to grate in some Parmesan cheese, you can certainly do that as well. It will give it a lot of body and nice undertones, you know what I mean? But for now, let's smooth this thing up. And to start, all I'm doing is pulsing because if you go continuous, it will create a lot of froth and I don't want to have a whole bunch of froth created. And you can see the texture is already changing and it seems as though we have pieces of thyme that snuck in there. That's a choking hazard. Make sure you remove that. Is there any more? There's one more. How did that get in there, boy? Uncle Chris, again blind? Check your eyes. nice silky smooth consistency here and I know Caribbean people talking about hey that is not real soup but where's the yam and the dashi and the cassava and salt meat and all that this year your Wednesday night you come home from work place cold yeah winter we're talking about winter live and direct it, it's around the corner you're gonna love this soup man remember you can always freeze this too we make quite a bit here so after I eat tonight man it's going in the freezer you know what's that some parsley from the garden. I like a little greenery. I love a little greenery in there. And I am not a fan of basil. Basil would be a great addition in here if you like basil. Chris here, CaribbeanPot.com. A lovely tomato soup. And I am sure it's unlike anything you've seen before because I am on drop it first. All right? Go ahead and copy it. No, it's okay. Go ahead and copy it. Please.